a cider drinker. Ooh, we got you cider music. Yeah. music. <laughs> All right, you're back on Foodie and the Beast with David and Nikki Nellis on 1500 and 820 AM and TBD. And we're going to go from meat to meatless. Um, Glenn Babcock is here. He's the executive chef at Naj. And when it comes to meatless, Glenn, there's obviously a trend afoot. My wife has started meatless Mondays at our house. Which I'm having, you know, I'm getting used to. He's not making it easy for but me. But listeners are going to remember that two weeks ago we had cookbook author Kim O'Donnell in to talk about her cookbook, The Meat Lover's Meatless Cookbook. Um, and in your case, according to Meatless Monday website, mm-hmm. which I actually read, go figure, I did. <laughs> or I emailed it. It says, Restaurant it Insiders read. are predicting that Meatless Monday will be a hot trend in 2011 as customers crave more veggies on their plates. There are many reasons for restaurants to go meatless and it's no wonder that eateries across the country have joined the movement. Obviously, Naj has, uh, but uh, you're going to have to prove it to me that it's it's do it. So Very let's good. start. I feel like we're up to the challenge. Come okay, on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. You're let's bigger than I am, but, uh, well, you're bigger than I am. All right. <laughs> so what motivated the Meatless Monday menu there at Naj? Oh, honestly, um, looking at uh, some of the other trends that were going on in the same time, and my wife, of course, uh, being vegetarian, so... Um, See, she was, of course, we didn't know. Oh, well, by the way, my wife is vegetarian. She's afflicted with vegetarianism? <laughs> she must terrible, be a, a terrible affliction. Uh, but the idea here is that, uh, you know, here's an opportunity for, for us to really shine in some of the things that we do really well in terms of some of the local sustainable produce, um, making some of those same kind of connections. It's all kind of tied into the same story um, mm-hmm. in this case. Now, uh, the Meatless Monday originally uh, kind of has its origins way back, I think it, as early as in the 80s. It was something by uh, Johns Hopkins University where they're trying to push for uh, reducing our meat consumption. The idea is that less meat makes us ultimately healthier, less uh, cholesterol, more vitamins, minerals, all that other kind of stuff. And uh, in addition, also uh, the uh, the green movement and sustainability movement has actually picked it up, kind of made it their uh, the reason to be at the moment, where uh, where ultimately it proves that if we can reduce our meat consumption by about 15 percent, uh, it just really means that we're going to be that much closer. It's not like hey, everybody take up vegetarianism because that's the only way to be sustainable. I think they're a lot more pragmatic than that. And the idea is that you know we need to take our time. Uh, throw the idea out there, get people interested in the idea of eating vegetables again, and uh, ultimately, you know, moving towards that. And that makes us, as a society, on our societal level, a little bit that much closer to uh, something sustainable. Well, it actually does kind of go hand in hand with what Deborah was saying, because the truth is, if we go back to the old way of farming, there will not be as much available. So if we lessen our intake, it means we get a better quality product. Sure. We are helping the environment. So it does it does make sense for everybody to do. I sure. mean, so like my son said to me when we started doing Meatless Monday, Which one? the elder one, oh. Sam said, he, he said, well, if you already have meat in the fridge, I mean, it's like an oxymoron. I'm like, but we're just taking it away. Like I don't let, you know, I pack the lunch for the kids yeah, you'll anyway. You'll still eat it. I mean, right, that's I'll, that's the point. You're going meat, to eat but it I'm just maybe not eating tomorrow. It on Monday. You know, right. Just, sure. It's just the idea of it, it's, it's. I'll be honest with you. It, it's kind of meatless Monday is a little kitschy in the idea that it's vegetarianism for a day. Right. You, the whole idea is if you reduce your 15 percent uh, consumption of meat over the whole week, maybe mm-hmm. you have a meatless lunch, a meatless breakfast, a meatless dinner on different days. That's fine too. You right. know, the whole idea is it's all the same goal. Um, uh, hopefully, I'm not going to get an angry letter in the mail. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, the the whole idea is that you know it's just generally accepting the idea that of everything that goes into the production of meat. Don't get me wrong, I'm a carnivore myself. Mm-hmm. I should say omnivore, but uh, you know, I definitely, I'm, you know, as a professional chef, it's my job to also be eating, tasting meat. Um, so you know, and I love it. So and that's part of the joy of serving it. But also being able to take this idea of reducing our meat consumption on the level of society. As a chef, man, that's a, that's a fun challenge because now you're suddenly saying, well, how do I take a restaurant that's not really going to be ready for vegetarianism? Um, and, you know, that's not my clientele. I mean, certainly there are plenty of very good restaurants that do nothing but vegetables. But at this point in time, it's just an opportunity to present a menu to guests and have it be creative, fun, interesting, satiating. And then they don't even notice that there's no meat involved. Well, here's what I wanted to ask you. When you, so on Mondays you're completely meatless, but well, what does that what does that mean? Does that mean no eggs, no cheese? No, there's there's a difference between vegetarianism and veganism. veganism. So mm-hmm. so the idea is that we do cater towards vegans uh, in terms of one or two specials on the board. And uh, if you haven't been to our restaurant before, the idea is we still have the regular menu offered as well every Monday. So okay. don't, if you're suddenly in the mood for you know a nice steak or a nice piece of fish, you can still come on Monday because I can still cook that for you. <laughs> um, but the idea is that um, oh, there goes that question. Yeah, yeah. On the on the way spe- to go. But we also have a specials <laughs> board where we're doing daily specials every day, uh, about six to six to nine specials, everything from appetite entrees and desserts um, many of those items can be 
um, or have been created on Monday specifically to be meat-free. Well, let's get to some of the specific recipes because my thing about you know, n- going without meat is meat has a certain chew to it, a certain resistance, mm-hmm. and obviously a certain flavor. And um, it's very hard, you know, people always say, oh, you just grill a portobello mushroom. That's a load. No, yeah, yeah, there's absolutely a difference. That, I, I think, yeah. I think you're on, in some ways, uh, Amer- well, I'll say that we have to break the idea of dishes being protein, starch, and vegetable. Right. We have to think about it in terms, and many, there are many good chefs in D.C. that are doing this exact same thing. The idea is how all of those components work together on the same dish. And so but you're I not think thinking about in terms cook, of protein anymore. But for the home cook, it's hard, too. Oh, absolutely. You but know, not to it divide isn't, your not. plate, mm-hmm. you know, to think out of the box when sure. you're doing it. Because for me, the hardest issue with Meatless Monday is not making it car- carb-loaded Monday. You sure. know, bagels, pasta. That's, that's absolutely. And, and part of the fun with that is you can uh, you can escape the traditional carbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get away from potatoes. You can slip into something like uh, amaranth or polenta. Or, Back up. Uh, What's amaranth? Quinoa. I don't know that one. Amaranth is, is it's much like polenta, actually. Ooh. It's kind of the same thing. It's actually a nat- na- native, native American green. Okay. Or grain, I should say. Uh, it's cooked in many ways the same way. Or quinoa would be another way. Yeah. Using rice um, similarly. But, you know, I would encourage, you know, if you're just eating white rice or just eating fried potatoes or eating a bag of potato chips on Meatless Monday, you're missing the idea. Right. You know, the idea is you're trying to eat healthier. That looks like onion pasta. That is actually a uh, peanut pad thai, yeah. um, mm-hmm. but we've done it with uh, crispy tempura. Um, the fun twist on this one is that uh, we've Go done ahead, it with... dig in, yeah, dig please, in. Please, please. Um, oh, you know, should I? <laughs> that's why it's there. Um, but at the same time, the, the... This is the only reason I'm on this show. <laughs> well, Trust me. Go then, ahead. then it gives me reason to be here. Um, then, uh, so part of the fun with that particular dish, with the the peanut pad thai with the with the crispy tempura, is that we're doing uh, instead of the traditional uh, Thai version, we'd be offering it with uh, oh. something like toasted peanut chip or peanuts. In this case, we actually did a little bit of twist because we were looking for something a little bit more sweetness to combat the the acidity of the peanut sauce and the uh, the, the saltiness of the tamari. We just, we elected to do banana chips, so it's a lot of fun. I love the banana chips. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, and then uh, you know my sous chef was actually putting that one together, and I said, uh, you know, banana chips, that's kind of weird, but at the same time, you know, you think about it, you know, Elvis sandwiches, whatever, all these other things, you know, classically, mm-hmm. bananas and peanut butter go really well together, and that was just one of those dishes we were, we were messing around with in the early mm-hmm. stages of Meatless Monday. Um, Am I eating tofu? That you is are. tofu. Yum. Can you pass that over to Deborah? Yum, he so says. Can I just can, can say I, that can this I get is that on one record? of those places where chefs really can lead the parade for home cooks. Mm-hmm. That if you're out of ideas and you go and you see what other people are doing with Meatless Mondays, it's it's a whole world opening up to you, and that's what's really wonderful about Absolutely. this movement. Absolutely. And I'll be I'll be not afraid to say that uh, when I saw that uh, Mario Batali was doing it, it gave me the idea. It was like, man, if that guy can go vegetarian for right, a day, for a day, you know, with I all can. that pork. I mean, yeah. seriously, no, you're 100 percent right. Well, let's talk about how you came up with some of your recipes. Sure. And um, I mean, did you test them out on the staff? How did people respond? What you about know, your other clientele? The, the fun part of the way we do things at Naj is that uh, we're just basically coming up with stuff on the cuff, uh, usually. Every Every day between the hours of uh, 10 and 10:30, and then again at 2 and 2:30, we're coming mm-hmm. up with the daily specials. Um, some of the ones that we like so much are the ones that you see repeated. But okay. you know, it's always it's a daily it's a daily test, and we'll we'll play with the idea. We'll have the dish together. Um, a lot of the ideas it's, it's totally based on whatever we have in house. It's it's based on what what was brought to us that day. What uh, what kind of CSA could be pulled so together? So everything seasonal. What's kind of fresh? I mean, yes. you're really keeping the whole movement in mind as you're doing that. Absolutely. So I have a question because normally with like that pad Thai, I would I would have a Thai beer or something like that. But this last cider that Greg poured goes, it goes great beautifully with it. With it. Absolutely. Again, you guys apples, have, I mean, apples and peanut butter. Yeah. You never ate apples and peanut butter together as growing up. You know, you just I kind eat of, it every day. Exactly. There you go. So there's absolutely <laughs> there's no reason why those They're flavors shouldn't work. It's it's the it's the the idea of having that acid that acidity balancing out with the richness of the peanut butter. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's so many opportunities for for putting those things together. Absolutely. Um, okay. So now, do you have vegetarian dishes on your menu? Uh, yes, every I do. Week? How many? I mean, how many people are requesting it? How often are you seeing it? Are people asking for it more? What um, are you seeing? I would say we're still at the very early of the stages of the movement, okay. uh, particularly in D.C. I think maybe in Vermont it might mm-hmm. be a little bit more popular. In New York it might be more popular. Certainly in California it might be more popular. But, you know, we're in the early stages of, of the movement. Um, there's probably, I think there's probably three or four other restaurants that are doing it currently in D.C. Mm-hmm. You guys uh, were just featured in Food & Wine, too. Oh, we were. We were. Uh, Look yes. at you, Glenn. <laughs> I, well, I'm, uh, it's always an honor to be uh, to be mentioned uh, in any uh, national publication like that. So, mm-hmm. um, certainly... Um, Greg Anger can tell us about it, too, later, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, certainly a fantastic thing. Uh, so in addition to all these, uh, you're just basically putting stuff together, um, you know, at the uh, on the moment and based on what we have. So all right, good. You know, I was mentioned in food and wine. They sent me a letter. Dear Mr. Nellis, would you like to subscribe? <laughs> Cease and desist. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. You guys think you're such hot stuff. <laughs> you're not. All right. So uh, do we have to take a break? Are we? No, you changed the times on here. Oh, you made a no. mistake oh, in I, the script. So whatever. You... All right. Well, then, then let's t- let let me switch over to Greg for a second because mm-hmm. this would go. I mean, I'm 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 having your cider with the uh, with the pot Absolutely. tie, and it's really good. Do you guys? have a cider program you have over Huge. 500 beers at, at yeah, Birch absolutely. and Barley the funny thing um, is that you know I've been I've been in the cider for years now um, but kind of when we built Birch and Barley Church yeah I kind of got more space for everything so we upped the mm-hmm. amount of beers but also the ciders we, we currently have about 40 handcrafted uh, m- artisanal ciders nothing that's um, sweetened artificially um, mm-hmm. everything is 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 natural so, I mean, is that rare? It's, I haven't heard a lot about cider, so it, it, is that new? It, it's not new, um, mm-hmm. but it's expensive. Is it? Um, okay. And it's a niche market that's gradually gaining some some growth. What about it is so pricey, the way to... It's just like with with grapes, these are perishable fruits that okay. you get them and you have to... You have to make the cider then, mm-hmm. and it's a long process. I mean, these ciders take three to four months to make. Okay. They condition, they, they ferment for a long time. What is this? The one I just handed out um, is from Herefordshire. It's Oliver's. This is naturally fermented with wild yeast on the skins of the Herefordshire English apples mm-hmm. and aged in oak barrels for eight months. It's served flat. It's got great acidity. Um, it's like great a brandy. Tannin. Yeah. And it also has a little bit of, um, you can get like the woodsiness in the nose. It's got like kind of mm-hmm. earthiness that you associate with maybe like white Bordeaux or something like that. All right. All right, so do we take a break we, now? Now we take a now break. Now we take a break. Okay. Well, when we get back, we're going to be talking about some more ciders, and we're going to f- round out your Meatless Monday. This is David and Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast. We'll be right back. Always wind up here with you. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. 